Daya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari
So today, uh, in the, for the Sunday feast class, we're going to do a uh, reading from Bhagavad Gita. Hoy vamos a hacer una lectura del Bhagavad Gita. Uh, the chapter is the divisions of faith. El capítulo es las divisiones de la fe. And um, it's text number 24, we'll go over 24, 25, 26, and 27, and they're, they're very short ones. capítulo 17, textos número 24, 25, 26, y 27. Son cuatro textos bien cortitos. So, um, you want us? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 So, um, do you want to start? Just read. The, we're just going to read the English and. Uh, and then the purports, the translation and the purports, uh, starting on text 24. Vamos a, a leer el español y la traducción es de su divina gracia a ser Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Entonces, um, después um, vamos con la uh, interpretación. El texto número 24 lee así. Por lo tanto, Los transcendentalistas que emprenden las ejecutaciones, ejecutaciones de sacrificios, ejecuciones de sacrificios, obras de caridad y pertenencias de conformidad con las regulaciones de las escrituras siempre comienzan con O para llegar al supremo. Número, texto número 25. Sin desear resultados fruitivos, uno debe ejecutar con la palabra tat diversas clases de sacrificios, penitencias y obras de caridad. El propósito de esa clase de actividades trascendentales es el de liberarlo a uno del enredo material. Textos 26 y 27 que son juntos. La verdad absoluta es el objetivo del sacrificio devocional y ello se indica con la palabra sat. El ejecutor de esa clase de sacrificio también se denomina sat, así como también todas las obras de sacrificio, penitencia y caridad que fieles a la naturaleza absoluta, se llevan a cabo para complacer a la persona suprema, oh hijo de Cristo. All right, thank you. So, um, the reason I wanted to go over these three verses was, the first verse um, talks about undertaking uh, performances of sacrifice. To la, see. Oh. la razón que quiero uh, unir estos versos hoy es porque el primer verso habla de formas de sacrificio. These sacrifices um, are performed to um, attain the supreme personality of God, head or God. Este sacrificio se hace para poder llegar a la suprema personalidad de Dios o Dios mismo. And this first verse, uh, it says the they, uh, scriptural regulations 
always begin with the word OM. In the primer verso, dice que las regulaciones de las escrituras siempre empiezan con la palabra OM. And then on the second verse, it says that we should uh, perform various kinds of sacrifice, penance, and charity with the word tat. In the second verse, it says that we should perform various forms of sacrifice and penance using the word tat. And then on the third verse, it says that we should, uh, without desiring fruit of results, we should perform sacrifice and penance and charity with the word sat. Y en el tercer y cuarto verso, dice que debemos hacer ese tipo de sacrificio sin uh, esperar, um, uh, sin esperar algún uh, recompensa and you can see all the scriptures that Shri Prabhupada uh, translated for us to teach us Krishna consciousness all, all these uh, scriptures it uh, involves sacrifice and uh, surrender and certainly sacrifice in our lives we are we are all performing sacrifices just to be in this material world we have to uh, perform sacrifices if, if you're married or if you're working then that's a sacrifice uh, because you have to work to support your family so um, what's interesting is all the scriptures um, say that we should perform sacrifices and there's different methods to perform sacrifices and there's different reasons to perform sacrifices let's say you want a new car or something you have to work really hard to to sacrifice your time and energy to get enough money to buy a new car. So sacrifices are always there for every one of us. And in devotional service, um, you know, we sacrifice uh, you know, uh, living in the community, we sacrifice uh, so many things, you know, performing sacrifices every day, chanting Hare Krishna for two hours, meditating. In servicio devocional, hacemos muchos sacrificios también. Podemos hacer el sacrificio de vivir en un templo, de cantar Hare Krishna todos los días. But our, our goal our, for our sacrifices is to attain Krishna consciousness and become fully Krishna conscious and, and realize God. So with sacrifices, there's always a goal to what you're trying to achieve through sacrifices. So, entonces, con sacrificio siempre hay una meta, lo que uno quiere llegar haciendo el sacrificio. And um, what, what's interesting about these verses, it says, uh, you know, do these sacrifices with the word om and then the word tat and the word sat. And throughout all the Vedic scriptures, there's different processes and different kinds of sacrifices you can do to attain different results. In este verso, se usa las palabras om, 
la palabra tal, la palabra sal para los uh, sacrificios, pero hay, hay muchas maneras de hacer sacrificio en las escrituras. So, uh, Hare Krishna devotees, we, we uh, study all the scriptures and there's uh, so much information. Not only do we chant Hare Krishna, which some people might think that that's, uh, that that's just kind of a simple way uh, to uh, focus your mind, you know, and they don't, they don't uh, take into account all the other uh, things we have to put into it, you know, with the prayer, and the focus of mind, and then uh, asking, you know. Como devotos de Krishna, hacemos mucho sacrificio. Por ejemplo, el cantar Hare Krishna es un sacrificio, pero nosotros leemos mucho las escrituras y hacemos otras maneras que la gente no son tan consciente de lo que hacemos. And living an austere life, not caring where we reside. Vivimos una vida austero, no importa donde nosotros vivimos. Just depending that God will take care of us. Dependemos de que Dios nos va a cuidar. Uh, that's a sacrifice as well. Mismo es un sacrificio. So uh, sacrifices have to be performed while you're in the material world. Los sacrificios tienen que hacer mientras uno está en el mundo material. And there's uh, different sacrifices the kings even used to perform. In, in the past. They used to uh, perform sacrifices for the demigods just to attain power and, and wealth. And celebrities do it all the time. They perform sacrifices to get fame and adoration and wealth. Y los celebridades lo hacen todo el tiempo. Hacen sacrificios para obtener su dinero y su fama. And, you know, some of them sacrifice their, their, their whole self, you know. Algunos se hacen sacrificios de todo su propio ser. And uh, the reality is if uh, when you're when you're doing sacrifice and you get the results, and uh, if it's a material result you're, you're getting, well, that, that uh, you know, uh, burns, uh, burns away your, your karma, your good karma. La realidad es, si hacemos sacrificios en el mundo material para, para los retos materiales, pues eso es una pérdida. And if you don't perform sacrifices for Krishna, then you can be famous, wealthy, and uh, be worshipable by the common people, and then uh, all your you're burning all your your karma really really quickly, all your good karma. So that in the end, since you're not performing sacrifice for Krishna, then you'll have nothing in the end, and then you 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 fall down into a lower situation. Hay que hacer el sacrificio para Krishna, porque si lo hacemos solamente para uh, las cosas materiales, pues quemamos uh, nuestra karma buena y nos y caemos al final. But sacrifices for God are joyfully performed. Pero los sacrificios para Dios los lo hacemos con, con mucha alegría. And the more, the more you surrender and perform sacrifices for God, the happier and more ecstatic and blissful you become. And every day is joyful. Matter of fact, every day is better than the day before that one. So that's what that's uh, what you get with performing sacrifices for God. Yeah. So so that's that's what uh, the devotees are trying to do is to perform sacrifices for God, and and they're joyfully performed and. Uh, and, and exciting. Y eso es lo que los devotos hacen, hacen sus sacrificios para Dios y están hechos con mucha alegría. 
Devotees actually look forward to performing sacrifices every day. Los devotos miran adelante que quieren hacer sus sacrificios todos los días. Because every day is exciting. It's more exciting than the next one. Porque todos los días son más... And aren't we... Excitantes. Oh. Exciting. Ex, sí. ex, ex, how do you say it? Existante. Existante. So that's that's what the devotees we don't look at it as a a hardship. So los devotos no lo ven como algo difícil, algo sacrificio en realidad. And when you know when when I, I first came to the movement in um, 1979. It, it had only been going for like eight or nine years, I think, El maybe ten. Años, yo creo. And uh, when we had a, a little house, that they took the house and they cut it into ten rooms. Yeah, so they had five rooms on the top floor, and this is a small house. This is like a two-bedroom house, but but they made it into a, a you know uh, so many more rooms. So we only had that one house at the time, in the Denver Temple. So fue el único casa que teníamos en este momento en el Temple de Denver. And we had 60 devotees there with just this one house. So, um, needless, needless to say, there was no privacy whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, no privacy. And, uh, and we slept uh, about five people to a room. But I didn't have a room because I was a new devotee. I was in the Bhakta program. They had a program. So we would sleep in just one, uh, in one big room. And we have 10 people sleeping head to feet, you know. Next to each other. Uh, I didn't even know these, the, the, these devotees. And then, um, so that was a sacrifice. But it's funny, I didn't really even care. I don't know why, but I didn't care. Yeah, so. We performed sacrifices when the, you know, earlier on, and uh, even today the the facilities sometimes in the temples, um, they're uh, they're not uh, there's no hot water and things like that. that in Chicago, they would uh, make you perform sacrifice by cutting the they cut the handle. Of the hot water off the shower. In Chicago, they hicieron hacer el sacrificio porque quitaron el 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 knob que se pone para poner el agua caliente. Se lo quitaron esa cosa. And they didn't have in Chicago. They didn't have any. They didn't have any like facility for the devotees except for one big room for the brahmacharis. One one big room. And we just sleep on the floor. You didn't have any, we didn't have any money or anything, you know. We didn't get devotee maintenance at the time. So whatever we needed for our personal hygiene and stuff, we go out and collect it from the from the people on the streets. So 
So, the, so you know, karmi are people that are materialistic. They might look at uh, devotees or monks that are trying to live this austere lifestyle and just just say, no, I can't do that. That's too much, you know. Los karmis, que la, la gente en la vida material, puede ser que se miran a este tipo de devoto en los sacrificios y dicen que, oh, eso no es para mí. But, um, a devotee, his sacrifice is joyfully performed. And when we perform sacrifice for Krishna, when we, when we um, are performing sacrifice, it's, it's like you're taking your soul and you're holding it into, you're, you're, you're holding it into the fire of ordeal. Es como tú coges tu propio alma y se lo pone en el fuego. An example of this is if you have a, if you have an iron rod and you hold it in the fire until it turns bright red like the fire, it becomes fire. Un ejemplo, si tú tienes un, un palo de metal y se lo pone en el fuego y tú lo mantienes allí, se pone como de, en fuego. So that's what we're trying to do is perform sacrifice and holding our consciousness and focusing it just on God. So eso lo que estamos tratando de hacer, poner nuestro uh, conciencia solamente en Dios. And as devotees, we want to keep our our mind focused on God 24 hours a day uh, or as much as possible until we reach that point. Y como devotos queremos poner nuestra mente los 24 horas del día en ese uh, sacrificio de búsqueda de Dios. And it's interesting, the more you sacrifice for God, the more you want to sacrifice for God. You want to sacrifice even more. Y es interesante, lo más sacrificio que uno hace para Dios, lo más que quiere hacer, que quiere hacer aún más. And there, there doesn't seem to be enough hours in the day no que hay horas en el día. to uh, sacrifice as much as we would like to. Para hacer todo el que hacer. But if we hold our, our focus on God and keep the, the iron in the fire and hold, hold ourselves focused on God, then we become like God, we si become. Mantenemos el foco en, en Dios, o sea, como el, el palo de metal que ponemos en el fuego, nosotros ponemos como Dios. You know, uh, we're, we're not God, of course, but we're part and parcel of God. The soul is part and parcel of God. Por supuesto, no somos Dios, pero somos un, un parte uh, y porción y por de Dios. So if we can if we can completely focus all of our energy as a sacrifice to God. So entonces si podemos enfocar toda nuestra energía como sacrificio a Dios. Then we'll become, uh, you know, like God. Entonces we'll be, nos ponemos más como Dios. We'll reconnect ourselves and then uh, be in our original position. Podemos reconectar y entonces estar en nuestra posición original. And that's what we want to do uh, by practicing Krishna consciousness. We want to connect back to God. Y eso lo que queremos hacer en practicar la conciencia de Krishna es reconectar a Dios. Keeping ourselves in connection with God burns away all our useless karma from our past lives. Manteniéndonos en conexión con Dios se quema todo el karma malo de nuestras vidas pasadas. And we become illuminated from within. Y nos ponemos iluminado desde adentro. And it's like a, to, to attain full surrender, we have to start, you know, sacrificing slowly and then build up more and more every day. Y para rendirse completamente, tenemos que empezar el sacrificio poco a poco. 
It's like a train. It's like if you think about a train, you know, when a, a big train starts to move on the tracks, it goes slowly at first. Es como un tren. Cuando empieza a moverse, empieza primeramente despacio. And then it, then it gradually attains momentum. Y entonces se pone más rápido con el momentum. And then goes faster and faster and faster. Y se pone más y más rápido. And then it, it's so big that it becomes unstoppable. Y entonces, porque es tan grande, se pone como no se puede pararlo. And that's what all devotees are trying to do, is we want to become unstoppable so that nobody can stop us from surrendering to God. Y eso es lo que todos los devotos quieren hacer, ponerse para que uno no se puede parar a nosotros en nuestro... Uh, because certainly there are people that, like they say, misery loves company. And there are certain people in the world that are jealous of others, and if they see a happy person, the first thing they want to do is attack that person and make them unhappy and frustrate them so that they become like they are. Y hay ciertas personas en el mundo que son muy celosos y se ve, si se ve a una persona feliz, le, le, le gusta atacarle para quitarle esa felicidad. But we want to become unstoppable so nobody can uh, influence us. Pero nosotros queremos que no, no puede que nadie puede parar a nosotros. And bring our uh, consciousness down to the, the lower level. Y bajar nuestra conciencia a ese nivel más bajo. So, uh, as a, an, an, an analogy of the train, uh, the tracks, you know, are the Vedic literatures. Pues la anal analogía del train y sus... Uh, yeah, the Vedic literature show us a way to perform sacrifice. And so they guide us just like the tracks guide the train. Directly to our goal, which is God. So that's uh, that's why when we when we uh, attain momentum, we become unstoppable. And these. Uh, Now God, he protects the devotees and he does say that as we surrender unto him he will protect us from all evil. Pues Dios se proteja a los devotos y realmente dice que si, si rendimos, pues Dios nos proteja. We do see people in the world that um, try and control everyone and bring them down to a lower frequency. Pues pero hay gente en el mundo que Trata de bajar todo el mundo a una frecuencia más bajo. But if you mess with God's devotees, Pero si tú te metes con los devotos de Dios, then God, who says he, will, he protects his devotees, he becomes angry with you. Pues Dios, que dice que se va a proteger a los devotos, se pone enojado con usted. And nobody wants God to be mad at them. Because he's God. <laughs> and um, so that's why, um, you know, if you care about other people, you don't do things to them that you know they don't like. Yeah, because 
What, what kind of insanity is that? If you care about others, then you don't go up to them and try and uh, make them mad and then try and uh, upset them. And, but believe it or not, there are people that go around doing that. And they they do it to try to to take the energy of the other person. They try and uh, upset them. Because there are people that thrive off of negativity. And when we look around the world and we see what's going on in the world, with all the negativity that's being put out into the ether, and all the uh, people that are the government officials and people that are extremely wealthy trying to control the masses but this is insanity because they're, they're, they're wishing other people ill fortune and they're trying to redirect people away from God and so God does take offense to this uh, the devotees want eternal life and that's why that's why they don't um, really uh, care so much uh, for the material things and think about it eternal life eternal happiness that's what we're that's what we're all searching for so that's uh, what we can achieve through sacrifice by following the, the scriptures it's a life filled with light es una vida llena de luz. free from darkness forever Sin oscuridad para siempre. and then on our uh, performance of sacrifice uh, as we perform sacrifice if we get tired while making the push towards God Entonces, en nuestro sacrificio, si nos cansamos cuando estamos haciendo sacrificio para Dios, then we should just push harder to go farther. Pues tenemos que empujar más fuerte para llegar más lejos. Towards God. Hacia Dios. God, he will, he will provide us with unlimited energy to reach him. Dios nos proviene con energía ilimitada para llegar a él. We just have to make the effort. So, solamente tenemos que hacer la esfuerza. That's a form of illusion when we're doing our sacrifices that, we're, that we, we get, uh, our body gets tired or maybe we don't feel good. Eso es una forma de ilusión cuando estamos haciendo sacrificio y el cuerpo no se siente bien, estamos cansados. But if we just, that's like a wall that, that stop us from surrendering fully. Es como una pared para pararnos de hacer el sacrificio totalmente. And it's illusion. Y es ilusión. Because if you're connected with God, then you have unlimited energy. Porque si está conectado con Dios, tiene energía ilimitada. And He will provide enough energy 
to reach him. God wants, God wants each and every one of us. He wants to show himself to us. Dios quiere a todos nosotros, quiere mostrarle a nosotros. Yeah, he wants, he wants to, he's waiting, he wants to show himself to us. Quiere mostrar el mismo a todos nosotros, está esperándonos. So, um, God protects a, such a person and destroys every jealous soul that gets in your way. Entonces, Dios proteja a tal persona y destruye toda persona envidioso que se pone en, en, el, en el paso. We don't want to destroy them or, or harm them, but... No queremos destruirle o hacerle daño, pero... But we want every every soul to stop being jealous and to um, to also uh, start their path towards uh, full surrender towards God. So we have to have faith. We have to trust God que en Dios. and keep ourselves in the fire y of, el mismo fuego of love and devotion de amor y and stay humble. Y we have to become wise que ponernos, um, uh, uh, and and Sabios. Huh? Sabios. Oh. So, uh, Wise. we should all set an example Tenemos que hacer un ejemplo. because we should be sacrificing so that our love becomes ever increasing. Porque tenemos que estar sacrificando para que nuestro amor sigue aumentando. And we don't want to stay the same person we were yesterday. Every time that we meet each other, we should be a better person. And we should be completely different. So that that person that we meet, you know, he can look at us and say, oh, he's not the same person he was yesterday. He's not as demoniac or as, you know, as... Para que la persona que nos encontramos nos mire y dice, mira, esta persona no es el mismo que era ayer. Ya no es demoniaco, etc. <laughs> so that's, that's how we, we all, we all, I'm, I'm tweaking myself as, as well that we all should become like, you know, a new person every day. A better person. And uh, this happens when we fully surrender ourselves to God. And fully immerse ourselves 100% and we keep our sacrifice the fire of our sacrifice going until we fully see God and all of us should understand that within our hearts that God, he wants to love us completely as well. And God does want to show himself to us. All we need to do is ask him. And there's nothing in this world more important than this. Y no hay nada más importante en este mundo que esto. Everything else is secondary. 
Todo lo demás es secundario. So every breath that that we take we should be thinking of God. So con cada respiración que hacemos debemos estar pensando en Dios. And we should always be praying internally to God. He's always there, you know, he's there. Y debemos estar siempre rezando internamente a Dios. Dios está ahí, está siempre allí. And every prayer y todos los rezos can be a song for him. Puede ser una canción para él. And, you know, material relationships are like that as well, and, and uh, small small capacity. You know, relationship between a boyfriend and a girlfriend or a husband and wife. And so, uh, you know, when you first get in a, even a material relationship, with a, a, a man and a woman, uh, you know, you're always thinking about, you know, your girlfriend or your wife, or you always, it's always on your mind, you know, you're, you know, even when you're at work, or at least, you know, Cuando that's entra, what I, I see. Con, uh, con el sexo opuesto, está siempre pensando en, en ella o en él, en su esposa o esposo, mientras hace todas las cosas. So that's, that's what it's like, uh, you know, a billion times over in our relationship with God. Yeah, and so when when a, a, a boyfriend and girlfriend are apart from each other, a husband and wife, they're always thinking about each other. Pues cuando un novio y novia están separados, o un um, esposo y esposas están separados, están siempre pensando uno en el otro. Always making plans to be together. Siempre haciendo planes para estar juntos de nuevo. Always calling each other. Siempre llamándole uno al otro. They can't wait to see each other. No puede esperar más para ver el otro. So this is a relationship with God when we love God but it's a billion trillion infinite times over and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is God himself came down to this world to experience these loving exchanges between a devotee and God. And also to show us uh, what it's like to be fully immersed in loving God. So in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, Entonces, en las enseñanzas del Lord Chaitanya, it describes all the symptoms of love that he was feeling towards God. And sometimes when he felt like he, he was uh, separated from God, he would just, you know, fall on the ground and start crying and there's so many so many there's so many ecstatic symptoms yeah, that. so God was came down to personally show us um, you know how to love him mostrarnos personalmente cómo es que debemos adorarle. And God is love. Y Dios es amor. Unlimited love. Amor sin límites. And that's why each one of us continues to grow um, as we perform sacrifices for God. 
Y por eso cada uno de nosotros seguimos creciendo cuando hacemos sacrificio para Dios. The goal is to become better lovers of God. La meta es ponernos mejor amantes de Dios. So, uh, love, loving God melts away our bad qualities. Entonces, am amando a Dios nos derrite nuestras calidades malas. Love is a fire that burns away all of our bad qualities in our heart. El amor es un fuego que se quema todas las calidades malas en nuestros corazones. And love heals our hearts and soul. Y el amor se sana a nuestros corazones y nuestras almas. So we should uh, try and uh, surrender fully and experience love so it burns away the qualities, the unwanted qualities that are not beneficial for our souls. Entonces debemos intentar hacer el sacrificio completamente para que se sana a, a nosotros, a nuestros corazón, al corazón y a la alma. And devotees, um, they're, they're not like everyone else in the world. A devotee is not a thief or a cheater. Un devoto no hopefully. Es un hopefully. No, no, it, no. <laughs> he wouldn't be because he wouldn't be a devotee if he was a thief or a cheater. He might wear a, do a dhoti or a, a sari, but if you're a thief or a cheater, then, then you're not a devotee. And if, you're, if a person is trying to manipulate others or serve a twisted agenda, which is just focusing on satisfying their material senses, their own bodies, si una persona trata de manipular a otros, or, or to harm any soul ever, or hacer daño a cualquier alma en cualquier momento, then, um, then that's, that's uh, just condemning him to uh, illusion. Entonces, él está condenado a la ilusión. God has unlimited resources. God tiene el, uh, resources. Because, sin limites, sin limites. you know, God is the creator of everything. Porque Dios es el creador de todo. He has unlimited resources. He can, he can provide anything that we need for surrendering to Krishna. Él se puede proveer cualquier cosa que necesitamos para rendirse a Krishna. So we don't need uh, the materialist money. We don't need it. We don't need anything from them. Entonces, no, necesit ne no necesitamos el dinero de los materialistas. Actualmente, no necesitamos nada de ellos. And the only reason that we ask uh, people that are focusing their life materially uh, in material consciousness for money. Y la única razón que uh, pedimos a las personas que están en la vida material para el dinero is to help them uh, surrender to Krishna. Es para ayudarle a ellos a rendirse a Krishna. And thinking about it, if just like if you're a big, like, famous person, you know, a billionaire or famous person. Y pensando en eso, como si uno fuera un billonario o una persona bien famoso. The only reason we would ask you to give money to the temple is to help you uh, go back to God and to cut your uh, bad karma. La única razón que pedimos a estas personas uh, su dinero es para que ellos puedan llegar a Dios. Uh, we don't want it. We don't need it for ourselves. No lo necesitamos para nosotros mismos. A devotee could go out and live in a cave. Un devoto puede ir a, a vivir en un cueva. Because they don't need material things. Porque no se, se necesita las cosas materiales. 
So it's for the benefit of other people that we ask materialists to to give money to the temple and to serve God. Entonces, para su beneficio, que pedimos a las personas materialistas que se donan dinero al templo para que puedan llegar a Dios. It will save the soul of that person. Se puede salvar el alma de esa persona. And it prevents them from taking a really low birth, such y, as a cat or a dog. Y le previene de un nacimiento nuevo bajo, como lo de gato o perro. I think about it, if you burn up all your good karma by becoming famous, really famous, then if you're burning your, your good karma up, then when you leave your body, you'll have nothing. Pues piénsalo, si tú está quemando todo tu karma buena, siendo famoso o rico, pues que será cuando ya no tiene esa karma. And what happens uh, when you leave your body and you have nothing? You haven't used your your uh, life to serve God, or you don't have a spiritual bank account. So that's why we ask money from. Uh, people that, that uh, are materialistic. We don't, we don't want it for ourselves. So if you give money to the temple, then it lights a, a light in that person's soul. And just this light a little light in someone's soul, you know, and, and just illuminate a little of their darkness. Oh, it, it allows them to see. So devotees are here to give hope to those that cannot see. So, entonces los devotos están aquí para dar esperanza a los que no pueden ver. Otherwise, what they're doing is running off and jumping off a, a cliff into darkness. And they will be terrified at the time of death. But God wants to love every soul. Pero Dios amar a todas las almas. Everyone. Todo el mundo. So it makes God happy if we can uh, give them a little light in their lives. Because he wants to love them. Porque él quiere amar a ellos. If we can help even one soul to fully surrender to God, then your, your mission in this life is a success. Our body belongs to God because it's made up of the material elements, earth, air, fire, water, ether. Nuestro cuerpo pertenece a Dios porque está hecho de los elementos uh, materiales de tierra, uh, aire, um, uh, fuego. fuego, ether. And our body, uh, our body is a, a machine. It's actually a biological machine. Pero nuestro cuerpo es una máquina, una máquina biológico. And it's given to the soul to use in God's service. Y está dado al alma para que nos usamos en el servicio de Dios. So uh, the thing when interacting with other people. Is uh, because if we see that their body is a biological machine, 
porque vemos que sus cuerpos son una máquina biológica. Like a car. Como un carro. I mean, why would you want to go up and pat them? Entonces, ¿por qué quiere ir a, a darle un, un abrazo? I just got an, I just got a used car and I don't want to go up and pat it. Yo acabo de de comprar un carro usado y yo no quiero ir a a tocarlo así. And you know, a, a soul might be praying or something. Like say a devotee, like you know, we live in a temple and we're trying to serve God. So maybe you might be praying there. That person might be praying, and then. Uh, or even in a Catholic church or something, if someone is sitting in the Catholic church and praying, you know, in the in the in the pews there. Pues una persona de, uh, que puede estar uh, rezando aquí o hasta en una iglesia católica. We have to understand that, you know, we shouldn't go up and sit right next to them and and pat them or something. Tenemos you know? que entender que no debemos ir a, a sentarnos al lado de él y tocarle así. Because that's interrupting their prayers. Es una a sus rezos. Unless you know you're psychic, you can see what they're thinking. Then, of course. But we have to consider everybody and um, and understand that um, that the more you surrender, the more sensitive you become. Pero tenemos que considerar a todos y entender que lo más uh, se rinde lo más sensitivo que uno se pone. Uh, when I was traveling with Jagaguru Swami, cuando yo estaba viajando con Jagaguru Swami, who uh, Sri Prabhupada, he, he really liked him a lot. A quien uh, Sri Prabhupada le gustó mucho. And he was a really, he is, I say, he is a really good sannyasi. Y él es un buen but my service was cooking for 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 the sankirtan devotees that that were traveling with us. And uh, one time I went up to him and he said that he wanted to do something to fix the uh, motor home. So I went up to him and I said, yeah, sure, no problem, Maharaj, and I slapped him on his shoulder. So yo dije, pues no problema, Maharaj, y le di así en su, en su hombro. Well, I liked him, you know, he was a, he was a great devotee. Porque me gustó a él, fue un buen devoto. But I shouldn't have touched him, and I realize now <laughs> I had no right to do that. Right? You know, because uh, certainly I, I wasn't on his level. <laughs> and so, uh, anyway, I always think I always think back on that, and I think, God, I really wish I wouldn't have touched him, you know, slapped him like that. Yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't you shouldn't slap anybody that you like. In Vrindavan, India. In Vrindavan, India. I used to ride around on a, I bought a, a motorcycle there. And it was a fairly big motorcycle. And I was driving to the downtown on the motorcycle and I saw a cow on the left side of me. And I like cows. Yeah, I think they're, they're cute and, and they're friendly. So as I was driving by, and I used to feed the cows in Vrindavan too. I used to buy, you know, buy them uh, food and put it in front of them. Sí, yo, yo las vacas ahí. Yo compré, uh, para so I was driving by this cow on my motorcycle really slow, and I saw its ear, and I 
touch his ear like that. Precio estaba pasando en la motocicleta bien despacio a la vaca y toqué a la oreja del vaca así. And I touched it a little too hard and it, it actually, I could see it just, it, it was shocked by me doing that, you know. Lo toqué un poco demasiado fuerte y podría ver que ese animal se asustó. So when I came, when I was going back towards the temple, um, the uh, owner of the cow had a young kid take a bicycle and throw it in front of my motor, uh, throw it in front of my motorcycle. Entonces, cuando yo estaba volviendo al templo, el dueño de la vaca uh, tenía uh, una <coughs> tenía un hijo, un muchacho, um, ¿cómo se dice? Yeah, so so they prevented me from riding my motorcycle. Then I had 15 people surround me. <laughs> and they're all yelling at me. And I didn't know why, you know, I can't speak... Uh, Hindi or anything. And so uh, I knew one thing that they were kidnapping me, that they had a, mo a bicycle in front of me so I couldn't go unless I drove over it. And then the leader of the gang, he was trying to get around to the right side of me. Entonces, el líder estaba tratando de ir a mi lado derecho. And that would have put me in a vulnerable situation, so. Poniéndome en una situación muy vulnerable. So I really didn't know what to do. And then one of the villagers came over to me and he said, he says, don't ever hit the cow's ear. So yo no sabía qué hacer. Entonces, uno de las personas vino a mí y dije, mira, Nunca tu, tu así a la oreja de la vaca. Yeah, so I still feel bad about hitting the cows here, and, and I shouldn't have done it because. Todavía siento mal sobre que he hecho eso. No debería hacerlo. So my likes, uh, the cow didn't like it. Pues el, la vaca no le gustó. But I liked it because you know it's a soft animal. Pero a mí me gustó. Pensé pues un animal bien suave. But it created a really big uh, karmic reaction of some sort. <laughs> so it's important to uh, understand that some people, uh, they could be praying or composing songs they got in their mind or be thinking about their servers or something. And if you come up and slap them or something, then that's probably not a good idea. And so so that's the whole thing is we don't want to interrupt somebody while they're uh, doing service to Krishna. And uh, we don't want to disturb anybody. I certainly don't want to disturb anybody. So we learn our lessons on treating each other with love. Entonces aprendemos nuestras lecciones de cómo tratar a la gente con amor. And so, once again, if you care about people, you won't do things they don't like. Sí, por otra vez, repito, si uno tiene caridad para una persona, no quiere hacer a él cosas que no le gusta. So, is there any questions or comments? Hay preguntas, or corrections? Preguntas o comentarios? Anybody? No? Yes. Prabhu, uh, you were mentioning about the devotee that they can eat the cake and so forth and so on. They can, you know, become like kind of food and they don't mind and so on and so forth. So, but uh, I was reading how Chila Patricia and Saraswati, he sometimes he put the suit, you know, suit? Uh, a suit? A suit. A suit. A suit. A suit. A suit. A suit. 
Yeah, so, and sometimes he, he uses a nice car, very nice car. A nice car. Oh, yeah, 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 if you can, yeah, they could, they could, uh, you know, the guru, you can, if you're, if you're serving the guru, you know, you want to, of course, he's connected with God, you want to treat him with the same respect that you give God. And uh, so, uh, yeah, having, having, uh, you know, serving someone in that way, you know, giving them, you know, nice cars and things, you know, it doesn't affect them because their whole focus is, is God. Pues entonces, sirviendo a una persona así, dándole cosas buenas como un carro o uh, un vestido, no se afecta a, a él porque está uh, conectado a Dios. Yeah, sometimes Sri Prabhupada would, in India would ride around in ambassador cars. A veces Prabhupada en India uh, se montaba a carros ambassador. It really doesn't matter, you know, uh, what kind of material things you, you possess as long as you use them in God's service. Realmente no importa lo, el tipo de cosas material que uno se puede poseer si está usándolo en servicio a Dios. You know, I mean, I, w I would like, you know, a lot of things, but to use them in God's service. Me gustaría tener muchas cosas, pero para usarle en el servicio a Dios. But, uh, yeah, he's not attached, you know, uh, he's, he's completely God conscious, so he doesn't really care about anything in the world, really. Si no está atajado, está completamente consciente de Dios, entonces no importa las cosas en el mundo material. I don't know, do you think, what do you think about that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I know uh, Arizona wants a motorhome to do Sankirtan, you know, with, with then, you know, he told me once. Yeah, so he, you know, and those are expensive, you know, those are, those are, you know, hundred thousand or more dollars. But there's no, there's no problem with getting it because, you know, if you can get that, then you can use it in God's service, so it's, you know. So having a lot of money is not a, is not an issue, but... Entonces el issue no es de no tener mucho dinero. Yeah, as long as you're using it to uh, serve God or usarlo para servir a Dios. So are we running over or five thirty? Uh, all glory to your Prabhupada. I think it's